to continue where we left off. So we're speaking about how um, really there's this continuous struggle between the divine soul and the animal soul. The Benoni has the animal soul in full control to the point that even when he has just a, a strange or foreign thought or an, an impure thought, he's able to immediately push it out with his two hands. Now, what we've been saying recently is that, of course, the divine soul is divine, and therefore it has extra help that the animal soul does not have. The animal soul comes from the body. So it's the body's fight alone. The divine soul has God helping the divine soul. So it's called the divine soul. And uh, it quotes the verse in the Talmud, tractate of Kiddushin, if I'm not mistaken, that says that if God wasn't there to help the divine soul, the divine soul would not be able to conquer the animal soul. But it's an important concept because it stresses the point that we're not alone in this fight. That at the end of the day, God is on our side. And when God is on your side, that means that not only are you given the power to overcome the animal soul, but you are also given the power of truth, which immediately can overcome lies or the divine, the animal soul that can come from lies. The reason for that is because, again, the animal souls that are founded on, on, on this lie, on this illusion that is a type of a lie, um, doesn't stand the test of time. Truth does. And therefore, it's really eternity fighting the temporary. And uh, when eternity fights the temporary, it always wins. So that's the idea here, page six. I think the PDF, it's a different page, maybe 30 something. But I just want to show everybody where you're at the page six. It says six here, in the third paragraph. Let's continue. King David writes in his Psalms. Does anyone want to read? I'll read if nobody else wants to. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mom. Go for it. <laughs> okay. King David writes in Psalms, for he stands at the right hand of the poor, the divine soul, to save him from those who would condemn him to death. God's intervention on behalf of the divine soul should not be regarded as miraculous reshuffling of the natural order. In the equally balanced confrontation between the souls, the godly light given to the divine soul tilts the decision in its favor. This is nothing supernatural, rather a logical consequence. Light prevails over darkness. God helps him by bestowing light on the divine soul, for neither side possesses an inherent advantage over the other. And through God's intercession alone, the Benoni's ceaseless internal struggle yields positive results. Right. It's an important thing to remember because sometimes we do feel all alone. And sometimes we feel like this animal soul is overpowering. But if we can connect to this idea, I think that that will empower us to the point that we will feel then invincible. This idea that God is with us, regardless of the challenge, God is there with us. He's giving us the strength to overcome it. And because he's there with us, we can overcome it. You know, uh, quoted yesterday by Rabbi Nachman of Breslev has a famous line that became a song in Israel that speaks about how even in the in, in hiding places where God seems hidden. Um, which means not just a hiding place, but where God is hiding within hiding. That means it comes, by the way, from Deuteronomy that speaks about how God in those days, maybe it feels like these days sometimes, that not only will he hide himself from, from us, his face from us, but he will... Um, I have to, my son is calling me from the army. He's about to go into Gaza. Oh, so I don't know if it's this is the call. So I'm, I'm just going to put it on mute for a second and I'm going to pick it up if you don't mind. Of course. Wow. 
Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Um, they're going into Gaza any second now for an undefined amount of time. So um, I'll call him back in 20 minutes. But um, so speaking of God hiding himself, <laughs> so you see um, uh, in Deuteronomy it says, Not only will I hide myself, but I'll hide within my hiding. What does this mean? So the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement, me, uh, says that sometimes God hides himself so much that we forgot that he's hiding. We forgot. It's like that kid who hides himself in the hide-and-seek game, and no one searches him anymore because he's hiding too well, or maybe we forgot that he's hiding. That's the worst type of hiding. And here Rabbi Nachman Breslev comes and says, Even in that type of hiding... We have to remember that God is there. We might say, oh, God has left the world. God is not with us anymore. But he's there. I'm there. God is holding us. You know, there's there's, there's a verse also that from also from the Torah me that says, that God, sorry, that under the world, under the world, there's arms. What does it mean? So some say it alludes to this idea that yes, the world, the planet, Earth, stands in the galaxies, and you might say, well, how can it be carried in in this universe? So God carries it, just like He carries every planet, and the Creator does it all. But here, again, Rabbi Nachman Bresa himself says that no, we have to remember that when we fall to the depths of the world, to the depths of the emotional world or even the spiritual world, that God's arms are there to, to carry us. You know, King David alludes to this, since we're speaking about King David in the book of Psalms here. But it's interesting because uh, if you look at the famous verse that we say at least twice a day, uh, so the famous uh, psalm, which became a prayer that we say at least twice a day, the prayer of Ashrei. We all know the prayer of Ashrei, right? Now, it's interesting because it follows the order of the alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hei, Vav. Arum, Chashem, Elai, Melech. Bechol, Yom, Avar, Cheka. Gadol, Hashem, Lolam. So you have Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hei, Vav. There's one letter missing. And it's a mystery. Because if you are going to follow the letter, what? King David forgot a letter? Hmm. That's the letter Nun. It's not there. Look it up. You'll see. Every verse starts with Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, according to the order. Except for the letter Nun, it's not there. How could it be? But what King David did so powerfully in order to emphasize this message right here is that he took the Nun, which really stands for Noflim, which means to fall. And he put it after the Samech. The Samech, as we say in the prayer, is Somech, which means support. Somech Hashem lecholan oflim, that God supports all those who fall. He put the falling after the support. Because in order to allude to us this idea that the fallen are not alone. Therefore, I'm not putting them as a part of the Aleph Bet Gimel here in the Ashrei. They don't stand alone. The fallen are always there with the support of God. So I'm going to put the fallen after the support, so that those who are falling will know that they have the support of God. And that That is really the idea here, that even though we may have these inner struggles between the divine soul and the animal soul, the divine soul is, a, is divine. And therefore, it has to remember that it's not alone. God is there with it. And he supports him. Supports uh, the person, supports the divine soul. You know, there's there's a a mysterious. And by the way, I I do want this to be a dialogue, right? So please feel free to share your comments. But <laughs> there's a mysterious line in the Talmud, which is and like incomprehensible, especially from a biological or medical standpoint, because the Talmud says that Achash Berosho Yasok Torah. One who has a headache should learn Torah. One who has a stomach ache should learn Torah. One who has a body ache should learn Torah. 
What should this ache should learn Torah? What Torah is the the magical remedy here? Yeah. You have to go to a doctor from time to time. Don't you have to take a Tylenol from time to time? Like what? What does this mean? So the deeper answer is no. It's not just that you learn Torah. If you have any type of ache, remember the author of the Torah. Remember God. By studying Torah, you'll connect to God. And then you'll know that you're not alone. Then you can continue on with your Tylenol or whatever else you need. But the first and foremost thing you need to do is to know that when you're in pain, you're not alone. Go and study Torah. There you'll realize that there's a creator to every name and that he's therefore there with you. And then you, you continue on with your medical pathway. You remind me of uh, a few years ago, they found in the basement in, in Cologne, Germany, um, written during the crusade period uh, on the wall it was written even though I don't see the sun I know it exists even though I don't feel love I know it exists even though I don't see God I know he exists huh, beautiful that's right yeah God may be silent we may not see him but he exists and he's there with us and I think it's an important reminder, especially these days where, you know, there's no horizon or our nation is going through a lot on so many fronts. But God is there with us. You know, it's um, it's embedded in the name of God. Because as Kabbalists like to point out, the name of God is Yud and then He and then Vav and then He which really has three Hebrew words in one word, in the Yud and He and Vav and He. Which Hebrew words? Haya, Ove, Veye, which means was, is, and will be. All those three words, Haya, Ove, Veye, are in that word, Yud, Ke, Vav, Ke. If you change the letters around, you can play it almost like a, a crossword. You can... Change the letters around and you'll see Haya, Hove, and you'll see Iye. Because in many ways, God was, God is, and God will continue to be. He's always there with you. He's now in the present. He'll be there in the future. And he'll be supporting you. That's God's essence. That's his quintessence. Haya, Hove, Iye. Yeah. Anyway, so on an individual level, when we fight our own fights with the animal soul, it's important to remember that God is there to save him from those who would condemn him to death, as King David writes. At the right hand of the poor. If I may add just one more thing again, I do want to hear your comments, but um, it's, also, it's also very well emphasized and stressed when um, in the Torah, when Moses was about to return to his brothers and sisters in Egypt to serve as the leader who would lead them out of Egypt. It's interesting because just before, right, God appears himself to Moses in the burning bush. He says, go and lead my people. And Moses refuses. And one of the questions that Moses has is they will ask me, what is your name? Jewish people will ask me, what is your name? What should I tell them? God says to Moses, tell them, I will be that which I will be. What does that mean? Yeah. And what is Moses asking, really? What Jewish people ask what God's name is? Don't they know God is God? Are we asking today what his name is? Who cares? But the, the, the message here is, is very powerful, very much in sync with what we're saying. And that is that Moses has seen his nation suffer. He just came from there. He ran away from there because Pharaoh wanted to kill him. But he saw the suffering. He took action when he saw the suffering. That's why he had to escape. He killed that slave master who was trying to murder a Jew. So he sees the suffering and he says to God, what's your name? What type of God would do that? How can you make the Jewish people suffer like that? Is that the way you, you portray yourself to the world as this mean God? That's what a name is. A name is our relationship with the world. Me versus myself, I don't need a name. I know I know who I am. I don't call myself Pinchas. Hey, I know who I am. To the others, I need a name. So 
Is that the way you, you comport yourself with the world, especially with your nation, God? What's your name? Are you the mean God? Are you the, the torturous God? What type of God are you? That's what he's asking. God says, I know. I know they're suffering. But I'm there with them. And I will continue to be there with them. And I will continue to be there with them. Forever and ever. ever. I'm there. I, I will be that which I will be. I will be there. As Rashi points out, I will be with them in their suffering. Inside their suffering. That's God's essence. He's there with us. And it was already uh, drawn on the map from the beginning of times. That's why when the prophet Zechariah prophesizes that the redemption will come, it says, which means that God will return those that were lost. In other words, all those brothers and sisters are lost. God will return return them. But it should say he will make them return. Why does it say he will return? And the Talmud points out that's because God also, also is returning from exile. God is with us in exile. He's not just making us return. He's returning with us. Because he's here with us. So it's an important point to remember, especially during these days. And uh, not just on a collective level, but as the Tanya is doing here, on an individual level. He's individualizing that the big notion. May they return alive and not dead. Amen. 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 It's true for the hostages. By the way, speaking of which, that was Sapir Cohen's message when she was here in our community. She was, uh, as you know, kidnapped by the Hamas for 55 days. And she said that's what kept her strong, knowing that God was there with her and he sent her there to be of help to her fellow hostages. Mm -hmm. That notion alone is really maybe the most empowering one. And I mean, all 133 of them should return well and yeah, physical and emotional good health immediately.